to be against all authority in the LCS Spring Split, but he's now with SK Gaming. They're going to be up against the Copenhagen Wolves, but that's after this best of three concludes. Of course, this is coming into game two. Can TCM keep in it, or will Nip get the 2-0? That's the question. Picks and bands coming through, and as of yet, pretty much the same. Maybe they heard me. Lee Sin Band. Yeah, Elysian banned out this time by TCM, along with that Renekton against Zoro Zero. On the other side, Elise mm. Shivana taken away, and the Caitlyn ban here as well. So, NIP, knowing that Matroko likes his Caitlyn, Caitlyn is incredibly strong still and not really changed on that front. But they obviously don't fancy her as first pick, and thinking that TCM are going to take her after that, decide to ban her out. So what's the final ban going to be here from TCM? Will they go the, the likes of Fizz? It is. Uh, yeah. Against Snoop Dogg, and it is going to be that Fizz. Uh, that leaves a Jax ooh, open and Zoro in Zero. Um, so I actually looked at Zoro Zero's latest played games. They were basically a page full of Renektons uh, uh, with Jax and with Olaf kind of mixed in between them. Those three is what he's been playing very heavily online recently. Gets the Jack through who we, we know. If he gets going, he's an absolute train. And this is this is the World Finals right here. It was the Jax, Renekton, and uh, Zach in the Zach. top lane. He's like, who are you going to pick? Who's going to go? If Renekton gets taken out and Jax gets picked up, what do you counter it with? There's not a lot. There's not a lot. We discovered this in the World Finals. This is the same type of problem that they're going to have to try and unlock right now. And they are unlocking it very quickly. That Riven's not going to get picked up unless they're using it mid lane, which actually is possible for Nuke Duck. We've also seen, interestingly enough, this may be, may be a mid lane Lucian. We did see that for uh, Samsung Blue yesterday. Uh, Yes, it was yesterday. Last yesterday. Whew, there's a lot of games going on. Samsung Blue yesterday played Lucian mid lane and an AD carry in the, the bottom lane. And it was a strong poke comp. So it's effectively the same sort of thing. And it clears the waves. It's what I was talking about, how you clear the waves. The fact that they've now picked up that Nidalee along with the Zyra, they're clearly going to have the poke in the mid. To counter that, they could have gone Lucian. And with a double AD, you can't push against a double AD. We'll see what uh, actually Nuke picks up from this one. We saw him hovering over Riven which actually really wouldn't surprise me. Again, looking at his games that he's been playing recently, a lot of Riven mixed in there as well. Uh, we'll see if that actually comes to light. Matroko with the Lucian gone, with that Caitlyn ban, looks like he's going to fall back onto the Varus, and that will give him obviously that same combo that they had in the duo lane in game number one of the varus Zyra combo. And it seems like Naruto is going to be going the same way as well, picking up that Volibear for a second game in a row. Yeah, and I want to I want to quantify why I'm thinking this because if you think back, Nuke, look, he used to play quite a lot of Ezreal in that mid lane as well. That's We've true. seen it a couple of times coming out when he was back with the Lemon Dogs. Whether they're going to go that way, I don't know. But as it stands, there's some very good poke from TCM. You've got the Zyra grasping roots coming from range. You've got the Varus piercing arrow and the Nidalee spears. And anyone gets near there, Volley Bear's going to fling you away. Jarvan possibly coming out. Herkibot has run this champion a number of times before. It's a strong jungler that he has, and he may even be trying. I don't know whether he's going to count or anything with it, but it's uh, certainly going to be an all in if he picks that up. Jax is going to be jumping in there, so he kind of needs a dive buddy with him, which is probably why I'm thinking maybe you're going to go with Jarvan. Which is why Riven would add into that as well here from uh, from Nuke Duck's side of things. Whether that'll change, we should probably not count Annie out of the mid lane either just yet. <laughs> well, uh, that's very true. We've seen stranger things than uh, that Annie actually been picked up for I, the mid and then something else. I used to mid. play Annie mid all the time. I love that champion, but it, it kind of irks. What? So this is. <laughs> <laughs> see, if I. I did not see that coming. I mean. I add him on oh, my list. I actually list. add him on my list. This is another one. Uh, Riven Syndra, who we should point out is actually banned in this tournament because of problems with her. Uh, Sion, Sion is in Nuke Ducks. Uh, quite a lot of games he's been playing recently. Wow. So we are going to see that one coming you, in. You think about that. The shield will cancel the spears very well. That's that's interesting, clever play. They've maybe left that nearly open for a purpose and thought about this was coming. They knew JWoww was going to go with Kha'Zix. Everybody knows that. It's kind of like the champion he plays, the only thing he does play in. That could be a problem, future problem for TCM because everybody knows that. Jax versus Kha'Zix is a pretty close battle. But I'd give it to Jax still. I don't know. Well, if Zoro Zero plays even remotely as well as he did in game number one, uh, I mean, this guy is most definitely on form. We saw that in the last one. Herky get Bot. some epic music queued up there. I can see it on YouTube. Yeah, they had epic music getting ready. <laughs> get his, getting himself pumped up. I mean, they need it at this point, TCM. Uh, obviously, 1-0 down. Best of three across the board in all our tournament games here this weekend at Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. Herkubot on Jarvan. Uh, we talked about that just a little bit earlier on. In the summer split playing for SK, played four Jarvan games. Uh, 
lost all of them, actually, funnily enough. So Jarvan, whilst uh, up there with his most played champions, is down there with, uh, you know, a win percentage for him, obviously 0%. But that's all a very different time, a very different team setup, very different ways of thinking. Um, I'm very interested to see this one. This Scion, like we said, did come into um, Nuke Duck's most played champions online recently, so he's obviously been practicing a lot of it for scenarios like this. I'm interested to see how, if you think back to the World Finals, Lemon Dogs, who effectively NIP have the core of right now, were too confident going into that. They were cocky. It, you could say, especially against some champions, uh, 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 some teams. Have they taken away that cockiness? They're up against TCM, they're 1-0 up. Are they being a little bit overconfident here, pulling the CRN out? Is this something, again, that Nuke Duck could be trying to show the world, maybe at the wrong time? I, I'm always very curious about things like that, because you never quite know but until the end of the game, right? The Whether thing is, if this was, if this was Diamond Prox, you'd be like, well, he's pulled out another, another yeah. gem. But as it stands, we're not sure. We're not sure. Time will tell, ladies and gentlemen. We are live. It is game two of the Intel Extreme Masters here in Cologne. Ninjas in pajamas as your blue team are 1-0 up. And TCM Gaming as the red team are almost about to face check in towards NIP. But the trap gives their position away. And that's actually going to stop NIP's uh, blue invade pretty much dead. Yeah, that's going to uh, definitely annoy them here for this level one start. They seem to be very much committed as to where they were going right from the very start. We can see that Mithy got himself that stun built up here. You've got Zoro Zero who can stun. You've got Nuke Duck who can throw down a stun. It's actually very, very dangerous at level one here for TCM to be anywhere near involved. Yes, they have the likes of the fling um, and, of course, the grasping roots from Barney D. Zyra as well, but not quite the strength, I'd say, that NIP can throw their way. And you see that NIP have just bullied their way, basically, path up into the top side of the TCM jungle, got those early wards down. Pretty much a mirror image on the bottom side as Barney D does exactly the same for the red side of TCM. Yeah, a bit of a harass is the difference, really, on NIP. When it was a Barney D ninja-like snuck in there and got those wards down. NIP now coming around for a potential late invade. at 1.36 currently. They are still coming around. The Rutador's going to show himself. Try and put a bit of presence down there. Putting the traps down still. Belgian Beast trying to keep them away. Seems to have worked. I don't think we're going to see an invade from either team this time around. We did see both blue buffs being taken at the start of last game. Complete trade. But it seems it is going to be both starting off pretty much standard. Blue buff start for TCM and red buff start for Ninja Pajamas. Yeah, a lot of early wards, a lot of positional play, but no action coming in at level one from that one. So just a bit of information here. Nuke Duck starting off with his W, which of course is going to be giving him that shield from Death's Caress. And we'll see how that all works out for him. This whole Sion in the mid lane, as I said, he's been playing it online, so you'd expect that he's ready for a game of this magnitude coming in with it. It's down in the bottom lane. Matroco already being forced to flash away from this one. We see that early damage and the, the early threat really that the Annie can put out in there as well with the stuns. A great start from NIP. They're going to force Matroco to recall already two minutes in. Yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. Flash burn already. That's a big, big deal already. This in the top lane as well is going to be interesting because Zoro Zero is going to be up against JWoww. And JWoww is going to try and put a little bit of dominance down early on. But it seems Zoro Zero is already not having any of it and already beats them away just to keep them going. We're not hearing the game sounds from the... Uh, current screen at the moment because I'm hearing a Nidalee Spears when I'm looking at a Kha'Zix, which is slightly confusing for me for a moment there, but uh, there we go. The uh, sound will sort that out. There we go. Mithy back on, flaming away with that stun ready and waiting. So, Matroko, with that flash down, will we see a visit from Herkibot early on? We did see four minute turrets, if you remember, in game one. Don't think we're going to be that quick this time around. No, I don't think so either. And we are going to be seeing Freeze and Mithy already headed back here to spend what they can early on. Couple more wards coming out from Mithy. Double Doran's Blade will be the start that we see from Freeze. So he's going to look for a little bit of lane dominance. Uh, something we didn't mention about Sion there as well for Nuduk. Actually went quite heavily into the utility tree. Got himself that Explorer Award plus 
the uh, biscuit as well for that early sustain in things. And so far, doing a good job. 21 to 16 CS. Nuke Duck has the lead in that mid lane. This top lane, 15 to 19. And that's going to be a lot of jumping around, exchange of damage. But Naruto coming to mid. Straight in towards him. He's going to get the flip, but his stun was there. So no, he will not. Stopped him in his tracks. Flash was still used by Nuke Duck, so making sure he was safe. Nithy was coming up just to support, going to get some wards across that river. So that's probably just been the call from Nuke Duck. It's like, I didn't even see that guy coming. Give me some coverage here. And sure as hell he does. Double Doran's playing for freeze in that bottom lane. We'll see how that develops with Lucian. Look at this. Nuke Duck wandering at this point. Going up towards his top side. Hercule Bot is there as well. They're going for a three-man dive here on towards Jay. Wow, he will flash away. Zoro Zero actually taking a lot of damage there from the turret. Needs to be very careful here as Jay. Wow actually coming back around and he's going to bully them out himself as Naruto Door will join in the party as well. Are they going to check that brush up at the top side? I don't think so, knowing that Nuke Duck had come up as well. They decide, let's just back off. Let him recall. We've got free time to farm in there either way yeah the leap and flash required from jay wow i surprised he got away from that because he got caught by the counter strike of zoro zero and uh it's pretty close stuff from him but nuke duck didn't have that flash available couldn't make it useful for the ganks he's had to use it to defend himself just a moment ago that uh, shield not actually helping him out there he's missing a lot of cs on that tower so that was good work from uh, belgian beast to keep that pushed up considerably has managed to edge him ahead slightly in terms of CS, but Nuke Duck really, really interested to see how this one develops with a Scion in that mid lane. Scion, Sion. I've been saying Don't both know. just to cover the bases. No, I mean, pronunciation is different in different areas of the continent. Tomato, tomato, who knows what the Americans and uh, the uh, Santa Monica office came up with for Scion. Maybe something completely different to how we're going for it. Either way, uh, Nuke Duck doing a good job with him so far. And see how that one all develops in it. And that's what that's what excites me most about events like this. Number one, they're a new team. Number two, we're seeing new picks come into the table. It's certainly very interesting to watch. Mythium Freeze here have actually backed away. JWoww just getting himself some vision on the top side of the map there. Doesn't want her Q-Bot to be sneaking up once again there. Pretty much bang even in that top lane here, which just shows you uh, that this, game, uh, this, this lane is really going to come down to skill when it really matters. Bottom lane, finally Freeze and Mythi show themselves as well as that Minion Wave just starts to push up. But look at this. The ward was down. NIP saw where he was put by JWoww. And Herkubot has snuck all the way around the back of the Baron Pit. And they're going to try and lock down JWoww. Oh, but they've caught him good with Unseen Threat there. JWoww's feeling confident. He's actually used that stealth to try and get away. But instead, that was a great Counter-Strike Leap Strike on him. And that is going to be JWoww going down. Herkubot will pin in there to help him out. Zoro Zero picks himself yeah. up. The Killer Spear blocked off by Herkubot just in time. Wow, I'm not sure if that quite had the damage to kill him, but it would have been very, very close either way. Really nicely done there. Nice block from Herkubot as he saw that one flashing on through. I think they were waiting for that as they uh, did have that ward down to cover things up. And that's a worry for TCM. Not only First Blood going over to NMP, but to the Jax as well, who we know once he gets rolling, it's very, very hard to stop him. Nuke Duck here has tried to wander a little bit to this top side, to the bottom side. Not really had luck either way, being spotted out with wards both times. And they have seen him coming down to this bottom side here. Is Naruto Dog going to come through? Gets a pink ward on top of him. Won't quite be able to finish off. And that's going to give this red buff over to Herkubon. I'm wondering if we're going to see some Boots of Swiftness coming out here from Nuke Duck. Uh, or Mobility. Because mobility, yeah. he's looking like he wants to get around that map and go for ganks. So this is, this is an interesting setup from Nuke Duck. And you think of... You think back to how he was with, say, the Z play, etc. He was zipping around that map, putting all sorts of kills across there. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's looking to try and start those kills off early on. Also looking at Zoro Zero now. He went for double Dorans, building into a longsword. Whereas JWoww, obviously behind, didn't get the kill. Gone for a single Dorans and a longsword. We'll see how that one develops, because right now they're having that trade at the top. JWoww surely must now realize he can't win that trade. He's 1-0 to zero down, but he's putting a lot of damage down. Counter-Strike comes back down there. The Ignite! It's on him. JWoww's going to try and jump back oh. in, but Zoro Zero, would you believe it, wins that battle? I was not expecting that. I thought the Unseen Threat might be enough to tweak it from JWoww. So incredibly close there, and you look at the summoner spell cooldowns. 
Ignite was up for Zora Zero. He got that one off. JWoww's wasn't available to him. That's made the difference in that. But now the bear coming in here. Naruturador actually getting to the front side. Was out of range of the counter strike. Well, flash in there. Chomps down. And that is a nice kill back here. Onto what would have been a 2-0 Jax with a lot of power at this early stage. I mean, he still is. He's double Doran's Blade plus that Vamp Scepter as well. So he's got the sustain, got the health, got the damage now in this early stage. And in terms of kills, it's very similar to how game number one went in that top lane. Absolutely. The AD carries. Look at the difference it's starting to develop there. Long, uh, double Doran's Blade has now gone into a BF sword for Freeze. Meanwhile, triple Doran's Blade is coming out from Matroko. He may be hurting in that lane. You can see he's behind 20 CS right now. That's deadly. Nine minutes gone, 20 CS behind. This is dangerous, dangerous territory. We saw it in the World Finals, how how it worked out. It was Pushu up against um, Uzi and just saw how far behind he fell and how much of a difference that told on the game. Once He was just basically out of it. Once the AD carry is not in the game, it's going to be very hard for the rest of the team. So he's going to try and work. The rest of his team need to help him to get back into this one. Herkipot doing a styling job in that mid lane to keep him belching beast away from the turret. Zoro Zero back in lane, clearing out. He's actually behind in CS, the JWoww, but it doesn't matter because he's got those two kills. Yeah, and one thing that I noticed from looking uh, towards uh, the same for Nuduk once again, in pretty much all of the games that I saw him online, he went Soul Stealer first, and he's actually on that route here as well. Yeah, got those uh, boots of mobility in there. I'd still be kind of surprised if he went Soul Stealer at this point, but who knows? Who am I to say anything about that he one? Has we'll got, he has got the Amto in yeah, there. Exactly. Maybe he's feeling confident. I don't know. We see here that he's come down towards this bottom lane, and just the sheer presence of you know the fact that he can stun them up with Jarvan in there as well. They're looking to bully through. Goodsby will come back there on towards Mithy, and I think they've done enough to defend that one off. The top side was pushed as well with a two-man gank on towards uh, Zoro Zero, but he's able to stay on his three. But Naruto mm. is actually sticking on that top side as well. A Baron, uh, sorry. Uh, a little bit premature for that. <laughs> Dragon Ascent coming out here for NIP. This is this is clever stuff. NIP realizing that they are in a 3v4 situation. They couldn't shove the tower down, so let's take the second objective. Now they're jumping on Zora Zero here. Diving a Jax on a turret is a very dangerous, dangerous thing, but they've managed to take it very well. Or have they? Yes, they have just in time. That was close. The counter strike did not quite land. JWoww just lipped just at the right time. He'd evolved that leap, I believe. If I'm going to have a quick look at him, I can see whether he'd evolved it. That's what got him away. No, he hasn't actually. He's evolved the claws, so in the yeah. large claws as the first one. So it wasn't a small leap strike, but he just got out of range of that counter strike. Yeah, and that's what he, it, without that, he would have probably died. Well, he would have died uh, underneath the turret there, tanking that one up. Uh, Nuke Duck here, 89 to 96 CS, starting to fall a little bit behind from that one, but you can you can see why that's happening. Obviously, that spear getting more and more powerful from Belgian Beast as things go off. Uh, and obviously, Belgian Beast, he didn't really touch on that, deciding to go cleanse, which, you know, with the amount of stun that's actually in this NIP team right now, probably not a bad choice whatsoever. Uh -oh. As Nuke Duck again coming down. I think Barney D was just recalling at that point, and they've backed away from this turret completely. They say, well, we can't stand and fight against three men uh, with the amount of CC that they've got as well. We should back away from this tower, but fortunately for their minions gone, they're going to have to wait for another way. Barney D desperately trying to hold on here. Matroko was already backing away the moment that uh, Nuke Duck walked into that thing, so I was expecting Bar uh, Nuke Duck to just, uh, Matroko to finish the recall, and suddenly Barney D's like, ah, I'm in a 3v1, but instead they did back away. Managed to hold that situation up. Zoro is zero once again. Could be targeted on this top lane. They need to. Naruto Rador and JWoww, if they can get a good snowball going on and get JWoww built up. He's got that brutalizer now completed in there. And Zoro is zero. He's feeling very confident. You can see the distance he's keeping up that lane. How confident he is. So, I see a pretty much a ambush set up here from NIP on that blue buff. Herkubot's just walked over a trap there, which is certainly not going to help their uh, their case on, on the stealth front of that one. But as a blue buff spawns, they're going to make a strong challenge from this one. It's basically a spear from Nidalee's, or they've got to challenge this one back. But not sure that's going to come through, and that will be taken away here by Nuke. A great pickup for them. We'll see if they can keep a hold of their blue buff from that side of things as well. So, Bilge Water Cut, this was built up by Zoro Zero in the top. The, the battle between those continues, but it's the mid lane where the pressure is. You can see four members now of NIP. They've taken that bottom turret. Next one is the mid. Mithy could be Flash Tibbers here. Belgian Beast has got to be careful. This could go on the turret. There's five members, uh, four members, sorry, gathering up. 
Flash Timbers is available. Two of them actually grouped together. He's backing away. Realize Matraka coming around. The culling being used to clear the wave, and NOP will back off. Yeah, backed off completely from that one. They're going to try and steal the red buff, which is this is very reminiscent of game number one, the buff control that started to come out after the 10-minute mark. There was a flash from saying over on towards JWoww. Nuke Duck picking up his first kill of the game, and that's the danger. They, they see, okay, saying he's in the mid lane, but he's got boots and mobility. He's up to that top lane in a flash here, and then getting over the wall, able to pick up the kill, no pun intended. They're going to take the turret. And now we're seeing boots of mobility on Herkibot as well. This is a scary mobile NIP team now. They're going to be zipping around that map in quick style. Someone's going to have to react to this one because they can keep on pushing. This is three melee champions that will do a ton of damage to that tower if left unaided for a period of time. You see the Dimashia standard being thrown down as well. That's going to boost them all up there, which is why we see Belgian Beast having to return around to go in there. Nuke Dog dodging around there, trying to make sure he doesn't get caught out. That shield will block any of the damage coming in towards him. And TCM are not going to be able to push this mid turret. No, not going to be able to get through him. And Annie that's just come back around to make sure that this mid lane stays solidly defended. There is the shield now. You see starting to uh, blow up those waves of minions. Naruto is going to try and get a red buff back here. Obviously, his was stolen just a few moments ago, but he might actually be interrupted on that front. We see Annie and Jarvan both coming down to things, and I think he did manage yeah, He's got managed to pick that one up, and he's just going to back away doing a loop around the back of that red buff area. Mithy is desperate to do that. Flash Tibbers, who saw him there just angling around the back of the wraiths, just thinking, I can, I can do it, guys. I can do it. I can land it. And while all that was happening, Matroka, who was already behind in CS, we saw Freeze down the bottom. He's clearing himself free waves. Nobody anywhere near him. He's continuing that CS dominance now up to 35 CS head. Infinity Edge already completed. Rushed the Infinity Edge there on Lucian. And just look at Matroka. Because he went for that triple Doran's Blade, he's only got a pickaxe. There is a huge damage difference between the AD carries right now. There is Nuke Duck going to be having another blue buff. Obviously did steal the enemy blue buff just a little earlier on. So... He's had a blue buff for a long time at this point of things. And that's going to be finished off. A swift explosion of the shield. And he's going to be headed home to buy, which he's not done for a while here, actually. He's sat on 2,300 gold. And there is the soul <laughs> oh, wow. stealer from Nuke Dog. Confidence. Well, we talk I talked about it at the start. You know, how they did with Lemon Dogs in the group stage at the World Finals. We felt that maybe Nuke Dog was a little cocky in his picks and a little cocky in his play. Is it still in his game? Maybe that's part of his character, who knows? But the needlessly large Rod has gone with it. So if he can get that Soul Stealer going, we'll all be eating humble pie and it will work out very well for him. As it is, he's going to clear out that bottom wave and the top wave seems to be where the focus is because they're trying to get onto Zoro Zero once again. Jay Wow with the help of Narutador, who's going to try and get around the back. And we'll see what Zoro Zero does with this one. He's got no ward to jump off to, but we'll put the counter strike down. We'll leap off to the minions, but the slow coming in gonna force him to flash. They're gonna keep pushing through from this one. Red buff keeping him pretty much slow the entire time. And that will be a kill for JWoww. Brings them to 3-3 in kills overall. JWoww now finally picking up his first kill of the game as well. It's looking a lot better here for TCM. NIP needs to be cautious with this push in this mid lane because the two members, JWoww and Rutheru, are motoring down that river and they're ready to try and catch them out. They're backing off towards the uh, Wraith area. They're not going to go towards Dragon, but that may well key TCM to move for Dragon in that four on three situation. They're sat keying up. They could go for something here, but it's still a 4v5 situation. That's a dangerous, dangerous situation. NIP wanted to fight for it. Not in a position. TCM going to move for Dragon. And then move for Dragon, but that's Tipper's ground if I've ever seen him. They're all grouped up together. Mithy got his stun built up and you can see him just skipping around the edge, not able to do anything. And Nip are going to try and make a play on this middle inner, uh, sorry, outer turret, but no minions in there. And a quick reaction from TCM. They are held off from that one. There's a Cullin just been thrown out. I think only one connected and, and I think Doa and uh, Monte Cristo have been calling it the right thing it's more like a massage than a culling it's just like just massage is the back of the champion that you're hitting it doesn't quite just <laughs> nail them down it's just like oh perfect oh, you calling just, just got the right spot overpopulated uh, goldfish ponds <laughs> as it is though Freeze he can put damage down on that turret remember he's got that infinity edge he will get some good chunks if he's allowed free time on it 
And that's, so speaking of free time, it's Zoro Zero. He's off in that top lane again. He's getting that farm going. Looks like, um, is he gonna go? Where's he gonna go? Is he gonna go play to the Rune King here? Or is he gonna go Trinity Force first? I'm not too sure. He's managed to get that Phage in there. Felt he obviously needed a bit of hit points, was getting caught out by JWoww. Well. But Jay Wow is doing a fantastic job. Considering he was 0 2 down, he's got his build going. He's got that Hex Drinker in there. He's got that Brutalizer. He's got the Pickaxe. Probably gonna get the last Whisper completed shortly. So he's actually starting to look good. He was a key member for TCM in the for game one and at Tenerife for keeping TCM in this one. He could well be again. It's gonna I mean that Kazix. You've got to be able to rely on the damage that he can put out to, especially against such a mobile team. Kazix is the one that's going to be really chasing in there and finishing things off. Barney D has got an Oracle on him at this point, trying to clear out Herkubot exactly the same over the other side. Red buff is there. Who's going to get that one? It is Herkubot who will smite that one away. And they're not finished here just yet. As we see Nuke Duck coming in behind, both Freeze and Mythia joined in with them as well. But in the end, TCM back away. They know they've lost their buff. No reason to be losing anything else from that one. NIP back off. Still not able to push down this middle turret. They've done a great job here, TCM, of keeping that one alive. Yeah, but they are 2-0 to zero down, and they've got no pressure in either lane. Look, the top lane's continually being harassed, pressured by Zoro Zero. Clears that wave, pushes it back on towards the turret. Somebody has to deal with it. Down the bottom, Matroko having to deal with the wave that Freeze has already shoved down that bottom. Freeze himself comes back into the mid, keeps the pressure onto the middle turret. So all the pressure right now is coming from NIP. TCM simply reacting to everything that is being done to them. They need to start trying to make a play. Zoro Zero in a position may get a little bit carried away. He can see both champions though. He now has Nuke Duck coming in as well alongside him, staying out of range. I think Zoro Zero is going to try and bait someone here. Yeah, I think so as well. Nuke Duck here just <laughs> into that brush, just waiting. Yeah, look, he's can he cancelled his recall. Naruto oh. Adore. And we have seen him going in from that one. Here comes Nuke Duck from the side. They're going to go for the wards and Naruto Adore, and they've taken uh, both stuns in there, one after the other. Did lose about half HP, but not masses of health. But this turret may still be in trouble with the threat uh, that these melee champions are all going to have. They uh -oh. go in towards Naruto Adore, the slide missing, but there's Cataclysm. Zoro Zero dives in. Are they going to be able to get in more? Great grasping roots coming from Barney D, but that may just be able to delay NIP's push to the rest of the team. Comes around. Meanwhile, Freeze is going to capitalize on that positioning and take down finally that outer middle turret. Yeah, experienced play here. TCM, you can see, are trying to keep the bottom pushed as well. That will be the tower going down, the first tower of the game for TCM. But they've managed to do half damage to Inida to it and take down that middle one that they've been working so hard to. All because a simple little setup bait there from Zoro Zero and Nuke Duck. Very well positioned from NIP, showing their experience here against TCM. Doing well. Is it going to be enough? There? If you think back to 20 minute point in game number one, it was a very different picture. But slowly, granted, more slowly, uh, slowly, uh, is that even a word? More slowly than game number one. Um, it's kind of getting to that stage either way. Uh, NIP right now, again, clearing out as much as they can. Barney D doing the same thing for TCM. And we're going to get into a bit of a slower time as champions head back to uh, finish off items and what have you. And we can see that it's the Blade of the Ruin King finish all, uh, first off here for Zoro Zero. And a Death Cat now added in for Nuke Duck, along with that Soul Stealer from earlier. It's a very painful Scion, that's for sure. You, you got to equate really how the gold would transfer to say an item if he'd have bought something else and whether it's going to be successful. Because right now he's not, I don't think he's got really any stack. No, there's zero at the moment. No stacks whatsoever on that at the moment. So, so far, it's actually been a completely worthless item other than the, what, it's like a, it's a minor AP, isn't it? It's 20, 20 AP, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so far, it's been a pretty worthless item. We'll see whether it works out, whether it benefits them in the end. This is a big push from TCM. They may well try and brute, brute force this tower down. The Rutrador caught up there. That's a oh. full man. Tim is coming down from Mithy, catching on towards him. Chain of Corruption turns back around. Mithy's in all sorts of trouble. Gets popped up by the Strangle Thorns and cleared out by Jay Wow. But you can see the calling coming out, really massaging the rest of TCM. They're thinking, thank you very much. We've got a kill. We're going to back out. They didn't quite get the turret. Cataclysm comes in and her you want clean it up. Yeah, they've got two of them from that one. We'll see how many more they can go as they start to push on through. Barney D dying along with Matroko and 
NIP two for one, not all bad. It was a brilliant stun from Miffy, and they'll be, uh, he'll be very much disappointed that the rest of his team weren't quite within striking distance. Obviously, uh, two kills may have been more. If they were in there, there's a flash over from Nuke. Naruto no, wasn't ready for that one. Freeze able to pick up his second kill of the game. Belgian Beast has to leap away from this danger, and they pick up that inner turret. So in the end, it's three kills for NIP, plus that inner middle turret as well. Nuke Nuke only got two stacks out of that. <laughs> Still, <laughs> despite that, so we're going to keep persecuting this Soul Stealer because it's not really an item we tend to see. But it was a great turnaround from NIP. Look, mithy has been waiting his whole game to get that flash Tibbers, and now he lands it. He nailed it. Four-man Tibbers, beautifully done. He managed to get the flash. Perfect timing. Worked out well. The rest of the problem is the rest of the team weren't quite on the same page, weren't quite close enough. But they turned it to a great advantage. They got themselves an inner mid turret and defended the outer one, and it rolls into a dragon. Beautiful stuff from NIP. Yeah, that's a really nice combo. We are going to see Jay Wow here stunned up by the Counter Strike and Zoro Zero. He's doing a bit more damage than he expected there. It seemed like he'd already decided to jump away, even though he just hammered him down to half HP within a couple of hits. Either way, you see that TCM, this must have been part of their plan from game number one. The fact that they'd lost control of their, of their jungle, lost so much of the vision control early on, that they said we have to make sure that we have sight of both sides of our jungle. Barn indeed picked up a much earlier Oracle this time around, which also stems from the fact that they you know, didn't quite get so destroyed in the early to early mid game uh, in this one, in game number two. Yeah. Let's be honest, only 4,000 gold behind at this point, and that's with three turrets in advantage of ninjas in pajamas, plus the dragons coming out as well. But NIP, we saw it in game number one. Yes, they were a little bit shaky towards the later game and how they closed things out, but overall, they've come in with a very similarly impressive performance from game number one. This could be dangerous in the top lane, though, for Zoro Zero. No, it may be dangerous for TCM because here comes Nuke Duck around the side. The Utrador's left on his own as JWoww leaps away. And he's thinking, well, thanks, you just left me in it. The stun will be back up in a second. The counter strike comes in. They may oh. get them both there. The flash comes in. <laughs> no, he cancelled the animation by moving. And that's going to be Zoro Zero surely going down. The counter strike blocks the basic attacks. But JWoww manages to get the claws in there just at the right time. Nuke Duck with the ultimate running. Can he come around? The explosion <laughs> from the shield as JWoww hit him was the one killed him. I didn't even know the shield could explode through the trees there, but sure enough, he can. And just enough range through the water. And that, Apparently so. that shows you how much he's played him, by the yeah. way. Just from that uh, thing there. Here's Mithy once again. He's like four man last time. Let's see what we can do this time around. And honestly, I Thing with Freeze there, who's got his ultimate available, got everything, and obviously got a seal now added in. As we are going to see Naruto Dor here on the tower trying to get away. There's the shield pop, he's <laughs> down to half HP. Nuke just controlling him here, allowing her Q bot to have the damage on the tower. Another inner turret going down in favor of NIP. They're now 5 1 up on that front. Gold now 5,000 difference. Yeah, flipped away from the grasping roots. That's not what you want to see. So, uh, as it stands, Ninjas in Pajamas in a very good situation. Four stack now for Nuke Dog. We're continuing to keep that count going. Barney D trying to get some vision. So scared to go near these wraiths, near the jungle of his own side of the map because it is NIP once again in control like they were in game one. They managed to close it out, but it took them a while. We're up to 26 minutes. It's 5-1 in tourists now. You could argue that they're even more of a dominant position at this point. And honestly, I'm not too sure how TCM are going to turn this one around because their saving grace was JWoww, who was starting to get into it, but they've been double teaming him and there's been no response because it's only been Naruto Dawn JWoww trying to double team against a top laner and a mid laner. You can't do that with just a jungler. Yeah, and Jax is obviously building up towards that Trinity Force now, which, now he, well, he's a Jax. He's getting stronger and stronger as things go on from this one. He's died four times, but we've seen he can pick up these kills from the unlikely scenarios. Freeze at two for zero. Trinity Force added into the Infinity Edge now as well. They are in a very, very good scenario to be fighting at this point. Oh, my issue right now is, where's Belgian Beast? So we've, we've been following Nuke Duck. He's got his boots and mobility. He's piling around the map. Belgian Beast has not once followed, not once gone anywhere. He, he's not put any pressure. He's got 20 CS advantage, but great. Your opponent is 202, and he's up in the top lane, down in the bottom lane. He's creating every situation. You need to either be following, you're on Nidalee, he's a pretty mobile champion, or, and helping out. I mean, A, you can heal, B, you've got spears, but we've not seen any of it yet from Belgian Beast. 
Uh, but he's very, very quiet. Has now finally got that Rabadons in there, which may change things a little bit for him. But that's the difference. If you're on the back foot, that Nidalee can hold you off. But honestly, how long can you really hold a team like this off that have got, uh, you know, the, the CC in there that they need that are, are pretty tanky anyway? I mean, just look at Hercubot at this point. Really not taking much damage. Oh, God. Miffy, on the other hand, does lose half of his HP, and we can see that they are going to be closing in. Sion coming from the back. Grasping Roots will land, plus a Spear, but it doesn't really do a lot to them. There is the Strangle Bones. The stun went off from Zoro Zero, but they finished off Sion. Freeze coming in now from the side. There is a double kill for JWoww. NIP have to back away from it. That was a slide from Hercubot. Did get hit with a grass. Zoro Zero goes down. Two men left alive. TCM not going to chase. They're going to go and push mid lane. Great turnaround there from TCM. We thought NIP oh, had them. Great scissor position. They came from in there. A little bit overconfidence potentially coming out once again from NIP. So many times I've talked about this from, from the team. And it is a team that just seemed to get a little overconfident in their play. But this is going to be a Baron for TCM. A great turnaround. It's going to bring the gold pretty close. And in terms, if you equate the balance that a Baron buff gives you, it would put TCM now in the lead. Incredible play here. One dodgy fight there. Uh, these pincer movement things that we see so often ending like that, where, they, where they feel like, oh, it's we're so rare that you ever see a word. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that was a problem for them once again here. And that leaves us at 8 8 in kills. And the gold is just 1,000 difference with 5 2. TCM are going to start picking up turrets here. And that's where they start to really claw that gold back into their favor. And if I just have a look at the gold quickly, everyone got over 1,000 gold pretty much to spend and 3,000 gold for JWoww to go back with here. And the, it, it didn't seem to matter. I mean, they focused on two targets. That was the difference there in that fight because they wanted Matraka, which was the right target to go for for NIP. But the problem is Nuke, Nuke, and Zoro Zero weren't going for it. It was just Freeze and Mithy. So that's not going to have enough damage because matroko has got a good lifesteal in there with the Bloodthirster stacked up and the last Whisper. Now he's got another BF sword on top of it. Freeze does a lot of damage, but the culling doesn't do much. It, it, it does if it if it like non-stop and you don't move. But most people tend to move in pro games. They know how to dodge these things. And he just didn't get it in the right place at the right time. And again, we need to go back to A, the Scion pick, and B, the fact that he went for the Mech his Soul Sealer. Dangerous play, you gotta argue, in a tournament game. We'll see how it develops, but as of right now, they've handed TCM this game to take back. They're going to have a go at Dragon here, and uh, again, I think that pincer movement played a, a, a big part into that one. They burst down Nuke Duck before anyone else really got there. JWoww was controlled by that grasping root by the strangle thorns afterwards. That's two big hitters straight out of the team, and then it's a case of just chasing down 5v3. Dragon was taken there uh, by NIP, but the gold, because of the turret that went down in the top lane thanks to JWoww, He's still sat at just 1,000, the difference between them. Reactionary play here. And NIP realizing potentially JWoww could keep pushing on that top lane. Immediately rotate around, rotate around and go down towards his bottom turret. However, JWoww did back off. That's going to stop NIP in their tracks. And they're not going to be able to gain anything from this. So TCM gained the turret. There's a turret trade for the Dragon. They're going to take that, I think, so far because, you know, as of, what, five minutes ago, they were completely out of this game. It was looking like NIPs to win. They were in a, such a strong situation. Five on one in tourists. That's now five on three with a Baron buff to TCM. They pulled themselves very well back into this. Can they push for an inner turret? That's the next focus. They've got good poke. They've got the spears and the piercing arrows. If they can control the position of NIP, that's something they've not been able to do so far in this game. And we see their death cap added in as well for Nuke Duke now. So... He's going to be able to blow one target up. For me, that's in. got to be JWoww at this stage of things. We've seen the damage that he's putting down now up to 5, 4, 2 in kills. There's the culling coming out, and well, it's going to clear out a couple of minions at the front, but not really doing the damage to Naruto at all that they would have hoped. We see that Nuke Duke's still hanging off to the side. He's still looking for a target. As the Spears come over, they know that Nuke Duke was there, and he will have to do a loop back around to try and defend this turret, which, again, we talked about in game number one, the siege potential that you have with the likes of Inidalee. They've got the piercing arrows coming in, the grasping root from Zyra that can really cause some problems, and that's going to be basically a free turret from TCM. I, I was just thinking, I was, like, I was about to scream to TCM, tank the damn thing, finally. They do manage to get some balls, go in there, the plant spun down, and they do manage to take down the inner turret. So first inner turret of the game. However, they've got to be careful. Flash is almost available for Mithy. Once that's back up, 
They're going to see NIP going back to the standard engagement. He landed a four-man Tibbers previously. Can he better it? Well, it's a five-man if he does, and that is a real good start to a team fight. But it's not something you see every day, is it? No. No, that's for sure. And it's something they've got to avoid, which is actually they're going to go try and gank Nuke Duck down the bottom. Yeah, and he may just be caught out here of position. I'm not sure. It's probably better off trying to finish off Belgium no. this year with one uh, swift push. Actually, the rest of the team comes down from it. And Nuke Duck with a flash use, albeit mm. that was a flash that he was looking to initiate with earlier. So not a bad thing to have away from Nuke Duck. Uh, Nuke Duck but I don't want him to that kill in from that one. Zoro Zero has been really racking up this farm as well. Got himself right back in there for the count. Free still has a big lead over uh, Matroco in terms of CS. Mid lane is also pretty even with Belgium be slightly ahead on that front. Garuda oh. Rador is going to get interrupted. He's caught out here. He's had to use the flash, but he's got stunned up, but he's going to be able to escape there. What I was about to say, down the bottom, Nuke Duck, I thought he was actually going to bait the team because he could just use that shield to tank up some of the damage. The rest of his team were already almost there. If it had just stayed a little longer, they could have cleaned up three TCM members, but instead used the flash, played it safe, or just got out of there instead. So we are back to a almost siege-like situation between the two teams. Baron Buffer has worn off with five foreign kills, and look at the gold. 200 now between them. That was at 6,000, I think, at one point. Five or 6,000. This is definitely TCM back in the game, but can they turn it around? Couple of tweets coming in, Joe. Yeah, cheetah bot. I'm not sure about this. Should I call them lemons in pajamas, ninja dogs? Ninja <laughs> pajama dog lemons, ninja lemon pajama dogs. Well, don't forget SK as well. I mean, come on. Exactly. Herkybot's doing a grand job here. He's 006. He is 006, and he, he was instrumental in game James number Bond. one as almost. well. <laughs> not quite James Bond at this point, no. but he's close enough. We'll give him that. And yeah, I think whatever you want to call ninjas in pajamas, that is their real name, by the way. Uh, for a team that's not been together for so long, they're looking very good. Obviously, NIP now have a gaming house in, uh, I think, in Stockholm, Stockholm if, yep. I'm, uh, if I'm correct on that one. Obviously playing a, a big role at this point. The fact that Deficio in there as their coach, obviously, former NIP support player, adds a, a real big element into their game, I think, as well. Speaking of Herkybot, he's well out of position, realizing that he'd shove the bottom lane, keeping the pressure on the bottom. Top lane will... I think slowly pushing TCM's favor once these stacks work themselves out. So TCM now, they're going to probably send one away maybe to deal with that bottom lane. But as it stands, they want to keep the spears and the piercing arrows continuing to go and try and work them down. But there's, there's some chunky targets in there to hit. They've got a lot of hit points, a lot of beef about them. And I don't think they're going to be able to poke them down as quite as easy as they'd like. There you go. You saw the piercing arrow landing. Barely did a thing to Herkibok because he had his shield up. It's going to be a tricky, tricky poke down. And I'm not too sure they've got the time. I don't think the waves are going to clear themselves. Now we're going to see the top lane start to push itself, which they may rotate towards that inner turret in the top lane, I think, if this eventually siege holds out for a couple of minutes longer. Yeah, and they've definitely got a big advantage here. I mean, obviously you've got the, the piercing light from Lucian to push back, but if you compare that to the piercing arrow from Varus, actually, uh, at max charge, there's a huge difference in the damage that Ooh. those two uh, abilities are going to do. And certainly that Pope War would, would go in TCM's favor, and then you add the Nidalee Spear in anyway, and then it's uh, most definitely on their side. New Duck setting himself up there in the bush, something that we always saw uh, that you really like to do here. This could be so dangerous. Dangerous. Where's the DFG Kaboom. coming out? There is the DFG. Wow, gonna get rooted into position, but have they got the damage to finish it off? They turn around. Nuke Duck picked off by Matroco. There's the culling coming out. He'll get rid of the minions, but nothing more. And that's the danger. If Nuke Duck can't burst down one of them, Ooh. how are they gonna expect to win a fight? This could be it though. Cataclysm comes in. They go diving in, Naruchador caught out, and he's in position because he's Orozu, he's splitting across, he's going for Matroco. I don't think they're going to catch a bear like that, but they may catch out Jay Well. They can go towards Matroco, they could turn this one around, and they realize the danger, they have caught down the bear, I didn't expect that one. Zorozu being kited out nicely here by Jay Well on Matroco, but he's not going to be able to collapse on towards him, or is he? He's trying to cut across, the spear could come in though, Belgian Beast is there, the leap goes back in, but he's gone too far, Freeze comes in, cleans house, gets one and two, Belgian Beast 
pounces away, and NIP are back in the game. Yeah, I was going to say, Baron here coming straight after this one. And we see, oh, a spear coming through there, landing on towards Mithy, who is going to dodge the second one. Lucky enough for him, expected that one to come through. Baron is about halfway done at this point. Belgium beats the Spears are going to be super dangerous. They need to he got, he's either got the block mana. them or have to figure things off. He hasn't. You're right. I missed that fact completely. He's not got much mana There's here, but he's got oh. enough for one. That will only help NIP's case here, and they pick up the second Baron of this second game. Wow. Wow. What a turnaround play there. That was all about Zoro Zero coming in the back and catching out Matroko. Just caught him out of position and Barney D. Barney D got absolutely mutilated at the back. And, you know, once you let uh, a Trinity Force ready and uh, Randy Doman, Blade of the Room King, Jax jump on your support is not going to last too long. And that's he, he was just literally withered like the plant that he is. And Barney D, well... After a great play from TCM to get themselves in it, get that Baron, they've just gone and gifted it back to NIP. And I don't think NIP are going to take this one too lightly. They realize the situation. They almost threw the game. I think they're going to go back to the Lemon Dog style and play it smart and slow. Yeah, I think they're going to want to capitalize on this Baron that they've got. I don't think they'll want to drag this game out any longer than they really should have to. Randoon's Omen now added in there for uh, Zoro Zero. He's in, he's in a good position at this point, and if he catches the right target, then it's always going to be bad news for them. If we look at the gold, 4,000 pretty much is what's separating, 4.5. Uh, we'll have to see uh, how this one now goes. The Void Staff has been added in towards Nuke Duck. It's going to be a lot of big decisions for NIP. Where do we push? At what stage do we, you know, really go aggressive against a team that can, you know, really siege back on these towers that can throw a, a good spear and a piercing arrow and your AD carries down? Mm, absolutely. It is... I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I can see a way out of it other than maybe catching someone out again. Yeah. This, is, this is what they've got to do. And now that you look at the map, look at the vision that's been laid out by NIP, they're not going to get caught out of position. Uh, certainly not for the next three minutes while those wards are completely everywhere. Nukeduk himself, now that he's got his, his build up there, he's still only got two stacks on that Solstice, by the way. It's, uh, it's not really been a successful item, but sometimes it could snowball. It's a gamble, I guess, he had to take and maybe trying to pick people off, but uh, it's not worked out so far. Wow, still doing a great job. Kind of leapt in a little bit, baited maybe by Matraco a little bit too much in that last fight, which gave him suddenly gifted the double cut to Freeze. I don't think they were quite expecting uh, Freeze to be so close, but Lucian can get around that map pretty quickly. But TCM, they're back in it. They're back at the back at this situation where they have to just sit and ha hang tight and hope that NIP make another mistake like they did previously. Yeah, and Freeze for me, uh, you know, we talked about the call-in and maybe how it's not the most effective. But the fact is that Freeze's auto attacks at this point, plus uh, his other abilities, I mean, Infinity Edge, Trinity Forces, we are going to uh -oh. see Narutador going in here. There's the ultimate whiff from Matroko. Oh. The good stun coming out from Zoro Zero. He's going to use that random in zone, but he gets flipped back over to the rest of the TCM team. He jumps away to Nuduk, who gets the stun onto Narutador. Well, they're not finished off here. There's the one kill. Second one will go down as well. They did get the inventory on that bottom lane, but they've lost those two men once again. We talk about mistakes. That was a game. Two members of NIP with a Baron buff. The two key members, I could say, the top and mid laner. Key, key members. And look at TCM. They are rushing for the inhibitor. And NIP are not reacting. They're not reacting to this. Now they're going to see it. Now they're going to realize, holy crap, we've got to get to that mid lane fast. Yeah, and I'm not sure that they're even going to be able to hold it at this point. Herkubot's got to uh, be the one that blocks those spears coming in. We see the minions coming down as well. And this turret should fall here. The inhibitor, I can't imagine that they'll be able to defend either way. And that's pretty much given up there from that's NIP. I, I cannot believe what has just happened to NIP. They were trying the double push, which is fine. We had Baron, five bandit up. Shove your way in there. Brutal, brutalize your way into one of those towers. They would pretty much got the way in towards the bottom tower, but again, his position. And it's also, it was a bit of question. You can see Zoro Zero Nuke, though. They were like, should, should, we, should we engage? Should we, what are we doing here, guys? What, should, we, should we be fighting this? No, no, we've just died. We've lost the inhibitor. We've lost the dragon. And sure as hell, TCM are back in it again. They're like just wrapping up these gifts right now and handing them to on a plate. Yeah, and Baron just wore off there as well from NMP, so they've no longer got that one. And I think you're right in terms of they didn't quite figure out what they were doing in that top lane there, Zoro Zero and Nuke Duck. And it looked like Nuke Duck was saying, 
try and get JY out uh, JY out because I'm waiting in this bush to kill him. Then they kind of showed themselves. Then Naruto Door ended up coming around with Matroko, and before they knew it, they were uh, stunned up, flung around, and uh, generally just dead at that point. And, and they was talking about earlier, you know, the, how they wouldn't get picked off. Well, you can see there's a few wards being laid in the top there. There's not a lot in the bottom area of the jungle. Dangerous, dangerous play again for NIP if they start pushing too deep because they haven't got the vision control anymore that they had. They had the whole jungle littered, but that three minutes has just dissipated. It's backfired horribly. And it's actually TCM now that are on the push. Yeah. This whole steal is still not doing much. For <laughs> it's not. It, it's actually down to zero. Oh, one stack, one stack now. It's, it's worth it. Soul stinker rather than a stealer at this point. Not really much going on for that one. Brilliant. So Nuke Duck here. We're speaking of him, so let's keep on it. He's pushing down the bottom lane. They've got four in middle. We saw that TCM had actually run through the enemy jungle and we're looking maybe for the inner turret in that top lane, but they've all started to recall here, knowing how fast that Nuke Duck with that shield can get through these minion waves. Herkubot was there as well. But in the end, it's going to be pretty similar on that side of the map as they all start to recall. Yeah, and you got to remember, you can't you can't let uh, Jax get free time on a turret. He will just match it, mash it down in quick time, which is why they uh, quickly reacted there. They they could potentially have left JWoww to split push, in which case he would have got the inner turret. But hindsight being 2020, we do have full vision of the map, and they do not, which is why we can see exactly what's happening and have the ability to call them out when it goes wrong. But uh, right now, it's back to vision control. Look at this. TCM, they know what's happening. They've gone and bought a bunch of wards, and they're starting to stack them all around that Baron, which will be up in 46 seconds. This is going to be the key fight. The question is, who will win it? NIP, if they can land the stuns in the right place, if they can get a good Tibbers down, followed by a Cataclysm in there, Zoran Zero could jump in and land a good Counter-Strike. If they can stack them all nicely, works perfectly. But you've got that uncontrollable factor that is JWoww and Kha'Zix now with a, a uh, Guardians on, and he is going to be a problem because he's going to be looking for Freeze. And honestly, he's actually got the damage in there with the Bloodthirster, more of Malbordia's Last Whisper, Brutalizer, to really pick pretty much anyone off because the only tanky member is Herkibot so far. Well, I guess you could say Zora Zero is pretty tanky as well. This could be this could be a fight. Here. Yeah, and both teams kind of facing off in that middle lane. TCA were kind of like, okay, we're at Baron's side. Need to run back there as Mithy takes a big hit Ooh, yeah. from the spear. Another one going through very Ooh. close to landing. And that's going to signal the retreat here from NIP. They back off completely. Uh, one thing we didn't really touch on, by the way, is obviously the Enrage, which builds up. Oh, oh there, there it, it was. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dead Annie in the brush. Uh, Enrage that obviously builds up the E from Nuke Duck. He's got 600 bonus health from from that at this point. The fact that he's got 324 minions under his belt certainly uh, leads to that one. And we see the Baron started here by TCM. NIP are going for mid lane. They're trying to counter it. They're trying to counter it. Is it worth it? That's the question. The Baron's going to go very fast. Can they get on towards that inhibitor turret quick enough? They're going to try and pester. But the problem is Zoro Zero and Nuke Duck are here. They're the ones. Zoro Zero, you've got to be on that tower if you're going to go for it. Instead, they try and flash away from it. And that's a Baron gifted back to TCM. And would you believe it, third Baron of the game, second one for TCM. Everybody from NIP running away. What are you using the culling for? It's going to slow you down. He did manage to land an attack and instead freeze. He's running for his life. The spear is coming in the backside. Neutrador will have flashback available. JWoww jumps in. They try and catch the slowdown. That's going to be Lucian going down. Zoro Zero is the next target. Chain of Corruption. Oh, so close to landing. The spear's coming through. That doesn't land on Neutrador. Neutrador's got flip back available. Who will he target? No one. NIP back off. But that is going to be the inner turret on the bottom lane gifted back to TCM. I cannot believe this is a game throwing back and forward. TCM taking these gifts and maybe, maybe we're going to see game three. What a mess that was there from NIP. Two men pushing mid lane towards the inhibitor tower. Two men kind of half hanging around Byron but not really actually in the end. They didn't do one or the other in it and <laughs> therefore they get nothing from it whatsoever. They've lost another uh, inhibitor turret. They're going to lose the inhibitor as well there in that mid lane. And they're going to go straight to top because there is a big wave pushing onto the inner tower. In fact, it does go down to just the minions. Perfect timing here for TCM. They are absolutely ravaging the base of NIP right now. Freeze coming up in 10 seconds, but that's not going to be able to stop. And this is just 
such an impressive push from TCM. Have to question from NIP where the real thought process was behind that one, but TCM now are the team in the driving seat. Yeah, they may back away, I'm not too sure, but they got you've got massive heals coming out from Belgian Beast as well. That's three inhibitors now, double super minion spawning. Will they back off? I think they should. I think TCM should just back away from this one, take their licks. They're pretty low on mana, Belgian Beast, and they are, they're doing it. They're very well played from TCM. Classic, and look at the goal. Look how much they're all sitting on right now. TCM have this game in the bag. Crazy match. How many times have we said in the bag in this game, though? Uh, that's <laughs> what kind of worries me. We thought it's a big N bag. N NMP it's is holes. a bag. It's got a big bag with holes and multiple layers in it by the uh, You know who's got the sack. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> got the sack. Father Christmas. We all know that one. Brilliant joke. Um, but, yeah. We said I can't see NIP losing this one from this stage before. You know, it was a bit of a ropey time. They got themselves a Baron, won a bit of a team fight, and then split up and did that whole bottom and top lane push where they ended up just losing men, not really gaining a lot from it. I can't count that out from TCM here at this point, but you've got to imagine that one of these teams at some point is actually going to pick up the victory. There's a nice stun coming out of Minty to stop Naruto or not flipping him back. Narutador had just picked up that Guardian Angel alongside that of JWoww. We've got Zonyas in there as well for Belgium Beast nearly. Tough, tough comeback here for NIP, especially with those super minions now hammering in. Nigh on impossible comeback, honestly. You know, when you have a bear with the Guardian Angels on, it's just, you're not going to do a lot about it. You don't target it at the best of times, but you're not going to be able to do a great deal of damage. Spears are going to keep coming through here. The piercing arrows will fire on through. They're going to get taken though. Zora Zero is already at half health. Mithy is pretty much dead already because he's just taken a spear. You can see Narutador. There it is. Belgian Beast goes down at the side there. They go catch it on towards Mithy. Mithy's in trouble. They're going to catch on. Jade Corruption lands through Narutador, tanking up all of the damage. Sonya's hourglass from Nuke Duke's not going to be enough to save his bacon, that's for sure. He goes down along with the Mechie Soul Spaler, and that's going to be the Nexus turret being picked up. TCM pick up game two. We have a third match in the series already in the Intel Extreme Masters here in Cologne. And this 